This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus one hour, 39 minutes, 56 seconds, and counting. And joining us now here at our, our console in the Mission Director Center is Vern Thorpe, who is the Program Manager for NASA Missions from United Launch Alliance. And uh, Vern, welcome once again. I know you've been monitoring the uh, tanking operations. Can you tell us real briefly where we are in tanking and what's going on? Yeah, thanks, George. Uh, about 10 minutes ago, we came out of uh, a hold, a planned hold. It's the hold that we have to uh, make sure that we're ready to begin cryogenic tanking. It's our last opportunity to assess the state of the vehicle, the spacecraft, the range, the weather, and uh, things look good. Uh, we've got uh, one, uh, what we hope is a minor radar issue on the range that we're working with the spacecraft and launch vehicle are healthy, and we uh, have begun our cryogenic tanking operations. Well, Vern, this is a, a really a very busy year coming up for United Launch Alliance, and um, besides just our, our tracking data relay satellite mission coming up, what, is, what else is on your calendar? Well, ULA has been pretty busy for the last seven years. That's that's how old we are, and we've been launching uh, almost once a month ever since we formed. We uh, this will be, I believe, our 78th launch uh, over just over seven years. Uh, so that's almost one launch a month this year. We're actually going to ramp that rate up a little bit more. Right now we've got 15 missions on our manifest. We've got 10 launches planned from the Cape here in Florida, uh, five launches planned planned from Vandenberg Air Force Base, and uh, including tonight's launch, five of those, a third of our manifest, will actually be launches for NASA. We've got uh, Tedris tonight. We've got a couple of science missions on Delta II uh, later this year. We've got one more Atlas later this year. And then we've got a uh, big launch in support of NASA's exploration program. It's actually a, a test flight of the Orion capsule on uh, a Delta IV Heavy. Uh, that's scheduled for this coming September. Well, Vern, let's uh, talk a little bit now after the uh, Atlas V lifts off. It's uh, got a fairly busy flight profile with one fairly significant uh, coast period, but uh, walk us through now, we'll, we'll look at the video and you can sure. tell us what we're seeing. Sure. Uh, okay, that is what the vehicle looks like right now on the pad. This is actually a, a video from a, a previous launch. But we're going to use the Atlas V 401 configuration for this mission. That's the smallest of our Atlas Vs. And we do not require any solid rocket boosters on this mission. So the first major event that you'll see after liftoff will occur four minutes into flight. And at that point, we will have used up the propellants in the first stage, that booster stage that you see burning right now. And uh, four minutes into flight, when the propellants are used up, you'll see here in just a moment, we'll uh, shut down those engines. And then we fire some retro rockets to uh, back that first stage away from the Centaur upper stage. A few seconds later, we begin flowing propellants through the engine on the Centaur to thermally condition it. And a few seconds after that, we'll actually light that engine for the first of two burns for this mission. That first engine burn will last not quite 14 minutes, and it will put the uh, vehicle in a uh, slightly elliptical orbit. Uh, you saw the payload fairing come off there. That'll happen uh, eight seconds after the engine burn starts. After that 14-minute engine burn, we'll coast for, it's about an hour and 20 minutes, about an hour and 22 minutes. That will get us into position for the second burn that you see here. That second burn will last about one minute, and that will put the satellite into a geosynchronous transfer orbit. That means that uh, it'll coast up to geosynchronous altitude. It'll take us about five minutes to reorient uh, to the proper separation attitude. At that point, we'll separate the spacecraft, as you see right here. And then we'll do the usual series of maneuvers with the upper stage to uh, make sure that we don't contaminate or uh, come into contact with the spacecraft, what we call our collision and con contamination avoidance maneuver. Uh, basically, we'll put the uh, upper stage into a safe orbit, and that will all happen about uh, two hours into flight. We'll separate the spacecraft about an hour and 45 minutes after liftoff. And uh, what's the reason we have such a long coast tonight? Uh, it's because of the type of orbit that the, uh, the spacecraft needs. Uh, one of the reasons is because we want to raise the perigee. We want to raise the, uh, the closest uh, uh, approach to Earth on the final orbit that we put the spacecraft into. So during that long coast, not only will we get into uh, the right position uh, around the Earth, to do, to do the second burn. We'll also gain a couple thousand miles in attitude, uh, in altitude as well. 
And by doing that, that's uh, a couple thousand miles less that the uh, energy or, or less energy that the spacecraft has to expend with its own propellants to raise that orbit. So it's to maximize the amount of performance we give the spacecraft so that in turn the spacecraft can maximize the amount of propellants that they have on board for, for station keeping once they get into their final orbit. Well, Vern, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be looking forward to launch tonight and all the uh, upcoming other additional launches this year. So thank you very much. Okay, thanks, George. And we're now at T-minus one hour, 34 minutes, 28 seconds and counting. This is Atlas Launch Control. T minus one hour, 32. Pressurized center LH2 storage tank to chill down level. Roger. LC, step 360, RP-1 pressure decay test is complete, and RP-1 tank is stable at step 2 pressure. Roger. ECB stable at prefill. Roger. RD-180 has been on heated GN-2 for 20 minutes minimum. Roger. Atlas LO-2 ground chill down is complete. Roger. Start Atlas LO-2 tanking operations. Roger. LO-2 at 50%. Roger. LC, CFA Purge has been in displacement mode for over 25 minutes. Roger.
minus one hour, 30 minutes. Halo 2 at 60 percent. Roger. LCCLH. Go ahead. Op 50, step 370, Centaur LH2 storage tank, chill down pressure. Roger. Halo 2 at 70 percent. Roger. LC step 370, Centaur LH2 at 75%. Roger. Start Centaur LH2, transfer line chill down. Roger. This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus one hour, 25 minutes, 26 seconds, and counting. Joining us now is Jeff Gramling, who is the TDRS L project manager.